Venice is a city of canals, gondolas, and romance. Renowned for its architectural marvels, labyrinthine waterways, and rich cultural heritage, Venice is a top vacation spot for people around the globe. But is Venice sinking? Stay with us as we unravel the reality of Venice's dire situation and the innovative solutions that may save it. Is Venice really sinking? The question has been floating around for years, but the mysterious and romantic city, built on a series of islands in a lagoon, has captured imaginations for centuries. Aqua alta, or high water, is no longer an infrequent occurrence. Visitors now find St. Mark's Square temporarily turned into a lake at higher tides, and residents have started to voice their concern. So what's going on? The sinking of Venice can be attributed to several intertwined factors. Historically, the lagoon management, particularly land reclamation, and the deepening of underwater channels to accommodate large tankers has caused the water to move more rapidly. The wash from cruise ships and motor traffic has only added to the erosion of the foundations. Additionally, the city has a long history of subsidence. Built on muddy foundations with underlying plate tectonics at play, the ground beneath Venice has slowly compacted over time. Combined with groundwater being pumped out from under the city and a gradual rise in sea levels due to climate change, Venice has found itself in a precarious position. How fast is it happening? Venice's sinking is a slow yet relentless process. Recent studies suggest the city is sinking at a rate of 1 to 2 millimeters per year. Though groundwater pumping has stopped, subsidence continues. Moreover, the entire area tilts slightly to the east, which contributes to the sinking. Over the next 20 years, if this pace continues, the city may sink by around 80 millimeters relative to sea level. It may sound negligible, but in the long run, it will have substantial effects on the city's habitability. Predicting an exact timeline for Venice's complete submersion is a complex task. Experts have suggested that if current trends continue, Venice could find itself beneath the waves as early as 2100. This isn't an immediate cause for panic, but it's a sobering reminder of the fragility of this unique urban environment. How will this affect things if it's not prevented? The impact of Venice sinking is multifaceted. The city's heritage, art, and architectural marvels are at risk. As the water levels permanently surpass the original damp proofing, the saltwater's effect on buildings becomes increasingly apparent. Many ground floors are already uninhabitable, and the city's signature romantic decay is turning into a genuine threat to its integrity. Furthermore, the economic implications can't be ignored. Venice's sinking would be a blow to Italy's tourist industry and the livelihoods of thousands who depend on it. Special barriers are under construction to combat high tide, but this project has suffered numerous delays and the estimated completion isn't until December of 2023. Meanwhile, the city continues to sink. How much time do we really have? The answer remains elusive, wrapped in uncertainty of environmental variables and human intervention. The gradual process of subsidence, the unpredictable rise in sea levels, and the effectiveness of preventative measures make it difficult to pin down a precise date. But what is certain is that the situation is grave. The possibility of Venice disappearing is real, and the measures to prevent it are tangled in scientific, political, and social complexities. It's a race against time to preserve a city that's a living museum. The ongoing efforts to mitigate the sinking and flooding are part of a larger dialogue about heritage conservation, climate change, urban planning, and the delicate balance between nature and human development. Italy's play-by-play -play game plan Venice has sunk roughly 15 centimeters over the last century, and at least as far as we know, there's no simple remedy to this potentially existential threat. Some have suggested pumping large amounts of concrete into the foundations, but this approach is likely to cause more damage than it resolves. Retrofitting most buildings in Venice would also severely compromise their aesthetic integrity. In response to the need for a solution, the Mohs Experimental Electromechanical Module project was initiated. This ambitious endeavor and involves installing 78 mobile gates, each 20 meters wide, at strategic locations to create a coastal cordon aimed at minimizing major flooding events. The gates remain submerged during calm periods and rise up to block incoming tides when waters reach 110 centimeters. The project, first conceived in 1992, is nearing completion with an estimated final cost of about 8 billion euros. But Mose isn't without critics and limitations. It has faced delays, cost overruns, and 
concerns over its environmental impact. Furthermore, it only provides a partial solution, as it can't prevent flooding of particularly low-lying areas like St. Mark's Basilica. Some experts like Fabio Carrera, the director of the Venice and Santa Fe Project Centers and founder of City Lab, believe that a Dutch-style solution akin to the Netherlands' Delta Project may be the ultimate answer. This monumental flood management system, while effective, is also time-consuming and intricate, requiring a long-term vision for Venice. Beyond flooding, Venice also faces damage from Moto Ondoso, the wake created by motorboats. This wave-related damage has affected 60% of the buildings along the Grand Canal. Steps have been taken, such as banning cruise ships from entering the historic center and initiating trials of electric hydrofoil boats by Candela, a Swedish company. Jane DeMosto, co-founder and executive director at We Are Here Venice, even suggests refitting water buses and cargo barges with hybrid electric engines as a significant change to reduce this damage. Italy's plan to prevent Venice from sinking is multifaceted, focusing on a blend of modern engineering like the Mose Project and sensible urban planning to reduce wave-related damages. These measures might provide temporary respite, but a more comprehensive, long-term solution is needed to preserve this enchanting city's unique charm and cultural heritage. As experts in climate change and architecture converge to find solutions, the world watches with bated breath, hoping Venice can withstand the forces of nature. Venice isn't alone. Around the globe, many cities and regions are experiencing unprecedented environmental changes that threaten their existence. In Bangkok, Thailand, the bustling city is sinking at an alarming rate of more than a centimeter per year. The combination of groundwater extraction and rising sea levels puts Bangkok in danger of being partially submerged by 2030. Comprehensive planning and innovative engineering solutions are urgently needed to combat this issue. Miami, Florida, renowned for its beaches, faces constant flooding due to the rise in sea levels. The porous limestone bedrock makes traditional flood defenses almost ineffective. Current projects are focused on raising roads and implementing pumping stations, but the future remains uncertain. Comprising over 1,000 coral islands, the Maldives is the lowest-lying country in the world. A rise in sea level of just a few feet could inundate many islands, displacing thousands of people and destroying unique ecosystems. New Orleans, Louisiana has long struggled with subsidence and sea level rise, issues exacerbated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Levy improvements and land management strategies are critical for the city's continued existence. These are just a handful of the many examples of cities and areas threatened by rapid global changes. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Venice will be able to stay afloat? Let us know in the comments section below.